lesson we want to simplify expressions involving numerical radicals. This can be very frustrating to work with if, if you have not memorized the table of squares, cubes, and fourths in a previous lesson. If we're taking the square root of a number that is not a perfect square and we wish to simplify it, the key is to write it as the product of a perfect square and another number. Let's take some examples. The square root of 8. Notice that if we could rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Now 4 is the perfect square. So we want to get in the habit of doing that. What is the square root of 4? 2. So our final answer, and this we bring down, 2 times the square root of 2. Notice we have a perfect square and another number. The square root of 18. The square root of 18 is not a perfect square. Can we write it as a perfect square times something? Notice 9 times 2. So we write this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. What is the square root of 9? 3. The square root of 2 we can't simplify. So our answer is 3 times the square root of 2. Continuing, the square root of 150. Is there some number that's a perfect square in here? And I believe we can write this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 6. Notice the square root of 25 is 5, so we have 5 times the square root of 6. 48, now you might say 6 times 8 equals 48, but neither 6 or 8 is a perfect square. We always want a perfect square. So how about if we try 4 times 12? Because 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 12 is the square root of 12. However, a larger square root that's included in there is 16. 16 times 3. So we have the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. What is the square root of 16? 4 times the square root of 3. So 4 times the square root of 3 is our final answer. We actually could have taken the square root of 12 and broke it into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. What is the square root of 4? 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times the square root of 3. So either way gets us to the final answer, 4 times the square root of 3. The next part, simplifying a radical, we cannot have a denominator under the radical sign. In order to get rid of this, we rationalize by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by a key value that makes the denominator a perfect square. Let's begin with example e, the square root of 3 over 100. The square root of 3 we write in the numerator over the square root of 100. Now the square root of 100, 100 is a perfect square, so we have 10. So our final answer is the square root of 3 over 100. Notice the denominator does not on the square root sign. How about if we take the square root of 1 half? We can write the square root of 1 over the square root of 2. Notice we have a square root in the denominator. So if we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2, and the reason we're multiplying by the square root of 2 is 2 times 2 is 4 becomes a perfect square. So now we have 1 times 2, we have the square root of 2, divided by the square root of 2 times 2 is 4, but the square root of 4 is 2. Notice our final answer does not have a square root in the denominator. It's okay to have one in the numerator, but not in the denominator. So now in this case, the square root of 3 over the square root of we can write this as the square root of 3 over the square root of 5, but we can't leave the square root of 5 in the denominator. So let's multiply the denominator by the square root of 5 as well as the numerator by the square root of 5. Now we have 3 times 5, so we have the square root of 15, and the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, but the square root of 25 is a perfect square, so we have 5 in the denominator and the square root of 15 in the numerator. And this is our final answer and it has been rationalized.